Well, a good leader is defined as one who leaves not just landmarks, but long-lasting legacies on the sands of time. President Bola Tinubu has demonstrated the true powers of visionary leadership with the launch of the construction of the 700-kilometer Lagos-Calabar Coastal Highway. President Tinubu, who describes the landmark project as a symbol of hope, said it will create direct and indirect jobs boost business opportunities, and pave the way for community development. The president was in Lagos to inaugurate projects as part of activities to mark the first anniversary of his administration. Let's share the story by our correspondent, Sarah Ayeku and Adedoja Salamadini. It's another homecoming for President Bolatinumbu as he arrives Section 1, Phase 1 of the lagos Calabar Coastal Highway, in company of state governors, members of the National Assembly, APC party leaders, and traditional rulers. Lagos, Nigeria's commercial capital is hosting these dignitaries to flag off the ambitious 700-kilometer superhighway, a 10-lane road project that represents President Tunumbu's commitment to facilitate economic growth and improve the living standard of Nigerians. May 29, 2023, we have over 40 new projects ongoing throughout the six geopolitical zones. Today we have selected some of the roads and bridges to represent the race of the new projects for Mr. President to flag off. We are not just starting from one point, we are starting this section one in about four locations. At the end of the project, we are about starting concreting. So the target is to finish this section one, not in 36 months, but in 24 months. So that, Mr. President, you will commission this first section of the Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway within the next second year in office, and we shall toll it and we begin to recover, you know, uh, do return on investment. But the beauty of this is not only in Lagos, because this road goes and transverses Ogun State, goes into Ondo State, before it finally do a bus stop at Cross River State. Mr. President, you deserve a big round of applause. This is not about you. This is not about your renewed hope. This is about the generational change that you are doing. For a man who conceived the idea of a coastal highway as a governor, achieving it as a president surely gives him bragging rights. To me, today is my, my day to brag. It's my bragging day. Don't be afraid. We will do this road. 700 kilometers. It will be a success for Nigeria. And we'll do more of this. As part of the Renewed Hope agenda, the president flagged off the 700-kilometer lagos Calabar Coastal Highway, 1,000-kilometer Sokoto Badagri Highway, a design and procurement of 461-kilometer Africa Trans-Sahara Route, and the reconstruction and rehabilitation of 330 roads across the six geopolitical zones. This is a major transformation for Nigeria. We're going to see economic transformation, the prosperity is unprecedented. We are going to see the development of industries like the steel industry, even the cement industry will pick up. Construction is one of the major drivers for job creation and for economic prosperity. This is a historic project for Nigeria. It's not a project for one man or one person. That is why I want all of Nigeria to embrace this project. It's not a project for APC. It's not a project for Bola Tinubu. We should own this project. And if we own it, the possibilities are incredible. The president is expected to return to Abuja on Tuesday for another round of commissioning. This time around, another minister in his cabinet will be showing off projects completed in less than a year. Sarah Ayeku, TVC News, Lagos. President Bola Tinubu, represented by the Senate President, Goswil Apabi, was joined by the federal and state government top officials. This for me is a great fit by any standards. Nothing to add than to say yes, this is just the beginning of the renewed hope agenda of Mr. President. 
the 36 kilometer by 10 lanes paved road, which began under the Muhammadu Buhari administration and completed by President Tinubu, was financed by the Dangote Group using tax credits. The road is expected to bring relief to port users and operators who had suffered great losses as a result of the bad roads and traffic problems in the area. And we have two ports that it's responsible for about 80% of our cargo in this country, the Apapa port and the Tinkan port. Therefore, taking off loads that go all the way to the east, to the Middle East, to the north, that road needs to be well fixed. The Apapa owned Sheki Road will be a catalyst for economic development, creating employment opportunities during and after construction. It has also permitted accumulation of experience in building concrete roads across Nigeria. Mr. President also inaugurated virtually the rehabilitated Third Mainland Bridge. I'm happy to announce that Mr. President, as the chairman of the band, nationwide, any form of excavation of sand or mining of sand, 10 kilometer either uh, downstream of any bridge and the upstream of any bridge. So if you are going to excavate for any sand, it has to be 10 kilometers away. We are also working in uh, um, Mutala Mohammed Bridge and a couple of other bridges. The third mainland bridge has high vehicular traffic as many residents commute to and from the Lagos mainland to the island, which is the commercial hub of Lagos State. Motorists have been warned to maintain the speed limit of 80 kilometers per hour on the bridge. Third mainland bridge measures 11.8 kilometers in length, has undergone rounds of repairs and replacement of bearings and worn out expansion joints. But this is the first time this bridge will be witnessing a comprehensive repairs and complete asphalt resurfacing since its construction 34 years ago. Adedoja, Salam Adeni, TVC News, Lagos. Those are reports by our correspondent Adedoja, Salam Adeni, and Sarah Ayeku. GKB, let me come to you on this. So much, you know, to hope for from these landmark projects that has been commissioned by the President Bola Tinubu. We've talked about uh, direct and indirect job opportunities, boosting of tourism opportunities, and so much more. But what are your thoughts on these projects undertaken by this current administration? Two things, really. We are long overdue for infrastructural renewal. The last time we had such a massive input into infrastructure was during the 75-79 period the first coming of Olusha Gumba Soja and Ritala Mohammed. That was the last time we really had this much input. That was when the Lagos Ibadan, Shagamu Benin, even the old, uh, the one they now mentioned, uh, Adagri Sokoto, uh, all these were built around that period. And most of them were built basically to move goods and services from our ports up north or to the east, as the case may be. So this is long overdue. Uh, we have not done massive infrastructure renewal at this magnitude for a long time. We've done some. We've done repairs. We've done redesign. <clears throat> because what is doing now? Why nobody who is a consultant, development consultant, will tell you that ultimately the Lagos Calabar, Lagos Sokoto, will probably lead to the trans Sahara Highway that will go from Sokoto down to Maduguri and then maybe come down to Zokoto again. And don't forget that the minister also promised the star, the star attraction of this administration, the Lagos Abuja Highway, mm. which he said is going to cut the traffic by five hours. That's what he said. We know the Nigerian factor. Mm. But that's about, uh, I, I tend to be, to be optimistic that if they can deliver all of it, and if they can deliver, that's why I'm very happy when they broke down into segments. The Lagos Calabar Road. So at any given time, instead of waiting 13 years, 14 years for the entire road to be completed, maybe you can have the Lagos on do access ready. We have the maybe Port Court Calabar access ready. And then we have that in portions. So by the end of the day, in two years, people can move to the road, maybe divert on some access, mm -hmm. and come back to the road and other place. At least 
these things will be usable by the end of the president's first term. Mm. That to me is key. That like they've done the Lagos, uh, the Apapa Osho, the Express Road. Wow. That one to me is fantastic. Mm. I, you fly that way regularly. Yeah, not only that. You, you've you've no, encountered no, some. some no, I have fond memories of it. Okay. Like, most people don't, didn't realize this, that at a point there was the road from coming from Ladipo crosses to Shoti before the Express. So the Express itself was, was basically to break roads. So for me, that is fundamental. All over the world, people are moving on now to concrete roads. They are now using cement. For even India right now, just finished their own 700 kilometers road. It started in 2018. So people are moving to roads that will last. That will last 50 years, 40 years. Two days ago, there are portions of the Shagamu Bini Road that are extremely bad. The portion from Shagam interchange all the way to their body. After they've done this, they'll look into those taxes as well. Mm. But to me, the renewal is fundamental mm. to the growth of our coastal communities and to those on the Western Corridor. Mm. Paul, you know, in as much as this is a good initiative yeah. because it's going to do, well, open doors for a lot of communities along the axis, we're talking about those who had to lose their properties on the side because of these, you know, infrastructural developments. But if you to look at it, you know, side by side, do you think perhaps there should have been a little bit of consideration, although they were compensated, or do you think perhaps maybe the government could have done something a little more, more different? Well, um, normally when there is going to be a major development, some people have got to make sacrifices. If you are going to open up a road, a major road like that, it is not um, strange that you find structures give way. And um, in fact, if I, if I remember well, I think the minister said that even though some of the people that would be compensated do not really have approved, uh, they don't have approved structures, the government will still wear human face, you know, and still compensate them. I think it's a good thing. I haven't heard anyone complain yet that they have not been duly compensated, or they will not be uh, compensated. So um, there, there is nothing strange, or there is nothing. It's not out of place that those structures have to go. Structures have to go for the project. But let me, at this point, also appeal to Nigerians that are very skeptical, mm. you know, about the Lagos uh, uh, Calabar Highway. Coast Highway. Now, I, I, I understand that. It is in the nature of Nigerians to be very, very skeptical about the, the, their leaders. And you don't blame them Absolutely. because of years of gross ineptitude right. by, by government. He just said something about the fact that we've not had this massive um, uh, building of infrastructure since the 70s. So Nigerians are passing through bad roads, you know. So, but then let us give this government the benefit of the doubt. Now, when I look at the... There are so many ways to talk about, but let, let me focus on this Lagos, Calabar. <laughs> Lagos Calabar, Calabar Road. When I look at the potential, the tourism potential, the improved transportation, the um, job creation, you know, anytime there's construction, construction alone creates jobs, jobs massively for people. You understand? When I look at all of, all of those, when I look at the fact that it is going to at least affect at least 30 million people, mm. Positively. Now, I don't think it's something that we just have to say, no, we don't need it. I've heard people say, this is not what we need now. So, if we don't need it, when do we need it? During the time of my grandchildren, hmm. when do we need it? Development continues. There will always be room, even after we are dead and gone, there will always be room for development. So, right. if you say, not now, so when? When should, develop, when should we develop development? So, mine is that let government see it through. Right. Let government see it through. Let them do it in phases. Look at the, the, the light rail project of Lagos State. Look at when it started. <laughs> Look at where we are now. And they see uh, the, uh, the journey still continues. Yeah. So I think we should just give this government benefit of the doubt. It's a welcome development amid the news of the undulating movement of the Naira and all, all of that. It's a, it's a welcome development. Mm. I welcome it heartily. Right. GKB, your final thoughts on this matter. Even if there are some skeptics 
about this project. And the president said, we should not be afraid. We should see that this project will see the end of the, we will see the end of this project. How convinced are you on this? And do you think there could be an evaluation process or monitoring process, as it were, to ensure that this project comes to the light of day? In the days of social media, they always be monitoring. Mm. There are people who are not only skeptical, they've made it their life's mission <laughs> to ensure they monitor this to the very last. When it comes to monitoring, I'm not afraid. A lot of people will come aboard, they will go there physically, they will spend time and resources to hold government accountable. The reason why I'm, opti uh, why I'm optimistic is this. They've broken the road into sections. Mm. So I'm not afraid. Because I, well, my, the word I'm looking at is this. Like I said earlier, if those sections can be completed, they will already be useful for those using that particular access. Let's say from Port Harcourt to Calabar. It's ready in two years. Imagine the level of economic activities it will generate mm -hmm. in that access. Imagine the one from Lagos to Gondo. They were ready, let's say, in three years. Imagine what it will do. At least they are not pretending. They are going to wait until the entire 700 meters are completed. Mm -hmm. That to me is the joy. Because the problem with the black man is that we assume that will start something and it will be in a straight line. It doesn't always work like that. If they could keep to that, the segmentation of the road, mm. I guarantee you, no matter what happens after this segment is gone, the majority of the road will have been delivered right. by the end of the first day. Right. Let's hope on that and hope for the best for our country. Well, let's quickly move on to our next issue of discussion. Where